Hey there Excel user, welcome to my Excel Power Tip channel and in this video I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily export data from a single or multiple SQL Server tables to a Excel workbook that you've already created. Now if the Excel workbook that you've already created, if it, there's data already in it, the export data won't affect data that's already in it. So I've got SQL Server Management Studio open here and on the left hand side you'll see the Object Explorer and in the Objects Explorer, you can see all your list of databases. Now, if you want to be exporting the data from the AdventureWorks 2012 database, so you click on this plus here, then you can see all your database objects, and then you'll have a folder for tables. And um, when you expand that, you have all your tables listed underneath the table folder. And you notice that related tables are grouped together. So, human resources tables are together, and you've got the person related tables together production and so forth now the prefix to the name of the table is called schema and the schema is a way of grouping related tables related objects together so for example you've got the human resources tables all together so the target schema that we're going to be exporting from is the sales schema and the three tables that we're going to be exporting data from is the customer table the sales order header table and the salesperson table. Now before we start the export process from SQL Server, um, I want to find out the number of rows in each of those tables. You can do that by typing a SQL statement. It goes like this. So we type select, then we do count, open brackets, asterisk, and the close brackets. Now this count is a called an aggregate function, a summary function. Now aggregate function relating to sum, min, max, average. So in this case, we want to use count. We want to count the number of rows for each table. Then after the from, we need to put the name of the table. What you can do is rather than put the name of the table, you can get the name of the table from the object explorer and drag it across and put it after from. So that puts the name of the schema on the table. And we do the same thing for the other two tables. We go down and drag the name of the schema and the table name after from. And lastly, salesperson. So now that we've got the SQL, SQL statements all completed for the count for all three tables, we can just highlight them all. And from your menu, click on execute or press F5. And then from the results, you'll see. Uh, three numbers and those three numbers related to the counts, the number of rows for each table. And we're going to be referring to those uh, counts next when we start the export process. The next step is to go back to Object Explorer and collapse the database folder. So we collapse the database folder by clicking this button here. This will make it easier for the next step. Then for the database, the target database that we're going to be exporting data from, you right click and click on Tasks. And that opens up a sub menu and go towards the bottom there's an option called export data if you click on that that's going to open up the sql server import and export wizard and click on next and the next thing is we need to choose data source so the data source is sql server so click on the drop down here and go all the way scroll all the way to the bottom and so you can either choose sql server native client 11 or whatever your version is or this one here, Microsoft OLE DB provide for SQL Server. I'm going to click that one. And then what we do is uh, just make sure that we've got the right database that we're going to be exporting from. So in this case, this is correct. And you can click on this drop down. You can choose any database that you want to export from. Click on next. Next thing, we need to choose a destination. So that's going to be Excel. So click on this drop down. Let me choose Microsoft Excel. And for the Excel file path, you type in the full Excel file path. That will be the full folders, subfolders, and the name of the Excel file, which should already be existing. Um, so I'm going to copy across from here. And paste it. Alternatively, you can also browse for it by clicking on the browse button. And then choose your Excel version. So in my case, it's Excel 2016. And click on next click on next 
And so what the wizard does, it shows you a list of all the uh, database tables as you saw within Object Explorer. So the ones that we need to choose are the customer table. So if you scroll down, all the related tables relating to sales are grouped together by schema for sales. We're going to choose the, if you click on this uh, checkbox here against the table name, customer, the other one, the next one is sales order header, which is this one here. The next one is sales person. Click on this one here. At this stage of the wizard, you can also preview the data. So if you just click on one of the the tables that have been checked uh, for exporting to Excel, and then click on this button here, the preview button, and you can see to make sure that the information that's seen in the SQL Server database is correct and it's the right data that you want to be exporting from. And click on OK. You can also click on this button here, Edit Mappings. And this is basically uh, how everything is going to be mapped in terms of the, the source, the destination, the data types uh, of the information that's going to be exported to Excel to the worksheet. And usually the data types are correct. Now, if you're not happy with the data types, for example, with this one, you can always click on the drop down and choose an alternative data type uh, to export uh, to the Excel worksheet for this particular column and click on OK. Then just click on Next and then click on Next and then click on Next again and then click on Finish. Now the wizard has got all the information that it's needing and it's now exporting the information, all the data from the SQL Server tables to the destination Excel workbook. And as data gets imported, exported, then you'll see the progress of the number of rows, data rows transferred. So for example, customer, and has been transferred, 19,822 rows have been transferred. And uh, when all of the steps have been completed, you'll see a state of success. So let's have a look at the, the number of rows being transferred. Customer, 19,820. For the customer table, we may do the count earlier. That's 19,820, that's matching. Then we've got the sales order header table, 31,465. When we did the count for the sales order header table, that was uh, 31,465 matching. And last one for the salesperson, 17 rows, 17 rows, so it's all matching. Then you can click on close. And that completes the export of the SQL Server tables to the destination Excel workbook. I've opened up the destination workbook and as you can see all of the SQL Server tables that we were looking at before they've been successfully exported into their own separate worksheet. So you've got a sales order header table in its own worksheet, you've got a salesperson and you've got the customer table. What's more, before the export happened to this Excel workbook there was already an existing worksheet and that was sales data. So the good thing about the exporting data from SQL Server, uh, whether it's a single or a multiple table you're exporting it from, it's not going to affect data that's already there. Thanks for watching and watch out for my next video.